Hello and welcome to another video about retirement, early retirement, the FIRE movement, etc. Retirement is a hot topic. Everybody wants to retire someday, sooner rather than later, preferably go to the Bahamas, sit on the beach and do nothing for the rest of your life. We want to have fun with our family and friends, maybe try something new, start a new business, move to another, another country, another, another state. Retirement can be a time of fun and relaxation where we can enjoy all the, all the money that we've saved up. But it can also be challenging. It's challenging if you're not prepared. I don't know if I was totally prepared when I retired two years ago. Like most people, I thought it would be fun and enjoyable. I would have no, no worries at all, but I was in for a big surprise. So there are tons of things that I wish I would have known before I left the workforce. Things like my social life changed. I wasn't around people that I was working with every single day. I did, had a lot of time on my hands. There are a lot of insights that I like to cover in this video to get you thinking about the transition from working to being retired or doing something else. It doesn't have to be sitting on the beach for the rest of your life. Most likely it's not going to be. So some things that I wish I would have known before I retired. The first thing I wish I would have known is that retirement is not all about money. It might sound surprising because we focus so much on saving and investing for years and years. We're talking all about the money, but it's not just the money. A few weeks after I left the workforce, I realized that I missed the social life. I missed people that I was working with. I missed the challenges, the deadlines, some of the meetings, not all of the meetings, but some of the meetings. And it had a lot of free time that I didn't know what to do with right away. It happens to a lot of people. In fact, there's somebody in my immediate family who retired after managing a team of over 200 people. He was the top dog at his organization. He went into the office and he directed people and he organized people and he had their respect. He was at the height of his career. And then the next week after he retired, he found himself gardening all day. That is a big change. And it was a big psychological adjustment for him to go from being at the top of his career to absolutely nothing. So it's something we need to consider when we're, when we are retiring, because for many retirees, we retire, especially if you're retiring early, then you still have a lot of energy, you still have a lot of ideas and creativity, things that you want to do. And retirement, in fact, is changing. It doesn't mean that you do nothing. It, for a lot of people, it means that they're just going to transition to do something else. In fact, according to two different surveys, over 50% of people who retire early and some that retire in their, in their late 60s at a normal retire, retirement age actually go back to work. They go back to work because they actually like it. They like the engagement. They like the creativity. A lot of people end up starting companies after they, after they retire. So I actually like the term financial independence more than retirement because we're striving to be financially independent where we don't have to rely on a job for our income. But most people want to continue to work because we like it. We like being around the people. For a lot of people, we get our sense of identity and maybe some self-esteem from working and it's a lot of satisfaction. So that's why so many people end up going back to work after they retire. And after we reach financial independence, it can be a great time to refocus our energies on something that we're really interested in. Maybe develop a new hobby, travel more, connect with other people, develop some new skills, start a new company. There are a lot of, of options that are open to us that maybe traditionally weren't, especially if you reach financial independence younger in life. You have a lot of, of options because you probably still have your health. You've got some money in the bank. You don't have to worry so much. You've got some FU money. You've got options to change a career, to move to another country, to start a company. So many different options that most people nowadays are picking over just doing nothing for the rest of their lives. One thing that we should all expect in retirement is that our financial situation may change. When I left the workforce, I had a good chunk of money. I didn't plan on working for quite a while, but then things changed. The market melted down, the pandemic happened, crypto fell off a cliff, and I had to adjust. I like the quote from Mike Tyson where he says that everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. We all make plans and things change. Our environment changes, the economy changes, our family situation changes. We might need to take care of a child or to take care of parents or maybe both at the same time. The sandwich generation as, it called, as it's called, which is becoming more and more, more common. So we have to make adjustments. So foresee that, plan for it. 
it might be difficult to plan for, maybe impossible, but maybe just plan for the unexpected, knowing that there is going to be something unexpected that is going is going to is going to change. So make sure you have enough money set aside for those plans and be open to alternative work. Be open to working a side job or taking part-time work or doing something to help uh, augment your income in retirement. Number three is that retirement is a process. It's not a set date. We can ease into retirement. We can, there are a lot of different options for retirement. We can take a few months off and go travel and then come back to work, move to a different country, cut back from full-time to part-time. It's a process that we think of it as easing out of the workforce and you might come back and you might go out and you might come back, especially as careers for people tend to get longer and longer. The Wall Street Journal came out with a piece about how the, our average career could be 60 years in the near future because people are living longer. They're being healthy longer. So people are changing careers. They may work 20 years in one field and then want to do something completely different. So they move to an entirely different field. And this is becoming more, more, more popular. So you might experience different stages of retirement. There's the honeymoon phase, the disenchantment phase, the reorientation phase, and the retirement routine phase. The honeymoon phase is when you stop working and everything is great. For a few weeks or a few months, you are resting, you're relaxing, you're, you're not missing those meetings, you're not missing the people. Good riddance to all, all of that because you are now retired and you can do whatever the heck you want. You can sleep in late, you can binge Netflix movies all night if you'd like to, you can stay out, stay out partying, you can do whatever you want. But that gets old, you can only do that so much which is why the retirement phase doesn't typically last beyond six months. After about six months or less, people start to get bored. They're not engaged. They're feeling like they, they need something more. There's more to life than just Netflix, They're just sitting around and doing nothing. Maybe retirement isn't all it's cracked up to be, people think, especially if you retire early in your late 30s or 40s, when you've got all this energy, you wanna go out and do things. You start to get disenchanted with the idea of not working. I had a friend who retired in his early 30s and he spent several years basically doing that, playing video games every single day. And years later, he looked, at, looked back on that and kind of regretted not using that time more productively. And now he has actually started a new company and is back to work and uh, hopefully finding a lot more fulfill, fulfillment than he did when he was playing video games. So during the disenchantment phase, you might feel a sense of loss or feel like retirement isn't exactly how you thought. You're not as fulfilled as, the, as you used to be. But this can be a good, a good time to reassess your time, reassess if the things that you're doing are fitting your goals and your values and readjust with a new sense of purpose, with new goals and new energy. You can reinvigorate yourself to do, continue to do things that you really like without the pressures of working for a paycheck. I was surprised how much I was still thinking about money and my career after I left my job. Uh, and that's one of the things that led me to create this channel is because part of my identity is as a, found, a, a company founder. It's a creator. It's somebody who's doing things, a go-getter. And it's difficult to transition. And I, frankly, I didn't want to transition from being that person to being a person who doesn't really do much. So during the reorientation phase, you might start to redefine your identity, redefine your role in retirement and seek to contribute in new ways to society or your community or your family, maybe by volunteering or by working and mentoring other people, um, mentoring some startup founders, find new challenges that you can take on, new, new opportunities, new, new hobbies especially if you're facing new challenges like family dynamics or career transitions or health issues. It's a time where you can reevaluate where you're going and what you wanna do with the, the next phase of your life. So finally, the last phase is the retirement routine phase where you get into a routine again that's different than you had before. It's one that should be aligned with your goals and what you want your next phase to be, to, to be like. Um, it can still involve a lot of hard work because uh, early retirement doesn't necessarily mean you're going to not do any work. In fact, when I retired, I was surprised that I, I, I thought when I was going to retire that I wouldn't have to think about money ever again. But I found myself thinking more and more about it and missing opportunities. Recently, I found out that 
I'm paying a lot more in health insurance than somebody else in my family because they're on top of it. And I qualify to pay a lot more, but I missed the deadline because I just haven't been thinking about money because I thought, well, I'm out of that. I don't really have to think about it. And I missed a big opportunity to cut down on, on some spending. So in retirement, you're still going to be thinking about money, which is why I say retirement is a process. It's a never ending process to budget and think about money and spending it wisely. It's not a date where once you pass that date, everything is great. And you don't have to ever think about money again because that's not true. So this leads me to number four. Retirement can be both rewarding, but also very challenging. It can be rewarding because now you get to spend time doing what you want to do. Spend your time how you want to because you don't have that pressure of having to work, maybe do things you don't want to do because you need the money. But it can also be challenging, especially as you grow older and your family dynamic changes, your, your, your health might change, you might face social isolation because you're not traveling as much, you're not in meeting as much, as much you're not doing the things you used to do which can affect your well-being and your quality of life. In fact, I read an article recently that said that being lonely is like smoking 12 packs of cigarettes or 12 cigarettes a day, which sounds, sounds very bad. So we strive for that, uh, for that con connection. Uh, so start to think now about what your retirement plan is and what you want your retirement to look, lo look like and what is the backup plan. What do you want to actually do? beyond just doing nothing. And if that doesn't work out for whatever reason, what is the backup plan? Do you want to go back to work? Do you want to start a company? Do you want to join your brother-in-law's company? Do you want to travel? What is the backup plan? Plan A and plan B in case that plan A doesn't work out. If this is giving you some ideas and give you some things to think about, then take a second and like this video and subscribe to the channel because I've got a lot more videos about early retirement and how to save and invest. Number five is that retirement isn't just about you. It's also about people in your family. If you're married, it's about your spouse and maybe your kids and your parents if you're taking, taking care of them. One of the best things that I did with my wife, Michaela, is we met every Sunday night to have a finance meeting to review what our goals were. And as we were getting out of debt, as we were saving money and then into retirement, talking about what we wanted it to feel like, feel like what we wanted to do, how we wanted to spend our time, and to have that plan. Few things can help a relationship by like communicating well about money and a few things can damage the relationship by not communicating well about money. So I think that alone is a skill that is great to be working on is how to communicate about money because there are so many feelings that come with communicating about money. There's, there's the joy of earning money, there's anxiety, there's stress, there's there's planning, there's different goals, aligning your goals and your values with how you're spending your money, how you're spending your time. In fact, just last night, my wife and I were talking about a vacation that we wanted to go on. She wanted to go on a certain type of vacation to go to a different country. I wanted to do something else, maybe spend less money, use our time differently. And we, we talked through that. We talked about our different ideas and what we had in mind for how we wanted to spend our vacation time this year. And I think that is a valuable skill to have if you are in a relationship that is something that you have to practice you have to practice compromising and discussing that and when it comes to retirement when it actually happened for me it was a lot different than what i thought it was going to be like and my wife was excited that she could focus more on her career and what she wanted to do with her time so i could be with the kids we have three young kids and then when the market tanked and i decided that I missed working and I wanted to go back to work, we had to reevaluate that. And developing those skills to talk about money really had helped us to get to that point. Number six is don't wait for retirement to enjoy life. I made a, a previous video talking about how retirement is changing, how it doesn't necessarily mean wait until you're 65 or 67 to start to get your social security and sit on a beach and do nothing. People do a lot of different things in retirement. And if there are things that you are thinking about you, what you want to do with your life, don't put it off until you're retired. Figure out a way to do it now because you might not have the time, the energy, the health, the stamina, the whatever. You might not even make it to that age. So do it now. One of the best things that I did in my life is I spent years living in Europe because I'd always wanted to do it. 
I always wanted to learn a language and now speak six languages because I took time to live and work somewhere else instead of waiting until retirement. One of the saddest things that I saw when I was traveling, I've traveled to about 50 countries, is I see people that are old and frail getting off the bus, that the bus takes them to a site, they go and they look at it, they look at the Mona Lisa, then they get back on the bus because they don't have the energy to, uh, to adventure, to travel around, to go to the hole in the wall bar down the street. They're just getting on the bus and getting off the bus because they waited until they were old to travel. So if there are things you want to do, whether it's traveling, it's learning how to dance, it's learning how to cook, whatever it is, uh, do, it, do it now and don't save it until, until retirement because retirement may never come in your later age and it might be totally different than what you think it's going to look like. So these are the six things I wished I had thought more about or known when I retired early. And remember that retirement can be a lot of fun, it can be challenging, it can be a lot different than you think. So start to think about these things now so you can plan for them in the future. And if this video was helpful, got your mind thinking about things, then please give it a like. Subscribe to the channel because I'm creating more content around uh, early retirement and saving and investing in the economy. And also if you want to stay up to date on what's happening in the economy and tips to improve your financial situation, subscribe to the newsletter, link down below, and go or go to morningdownload.com. I write a newsletter every day about what's happening in the market and how you can take advantage of it.